Hello everyone. Welcome to a very special paint mixer class. My name is Anna and I'm here to guide you today through a painting of one of my very favorite places in the world, Zion National Park. So for those of you um, who are familiar with our classes, you probably have a take home creativity to go kit. Um, so now would be a really good time to open up your kit. So you're going to open up the box and find a couple of things. So first and foremost, find your nice little eight by 10 canvas. You can set this aside for now, unwrap it if it's still on plastic, very important. Also in your kit, probably the thing you should really set down on your table first is uh, this little bit of butcher paper, okay? So this is to protect your surfaces. Acrylic paint, if it gets on your clothing, carpet on other surfaces, it can be permanent. So now would just be a good time to kind of cover up anything you're a little worried about. Also, you'll notice I'm wearing an apron. This is to protect my outfit. Uh, so go and change into something you don't mind getting a little messy or if you have an apron now is a really fun time to wear it. Okay, you also have these really cool little containers of paint. So go ahead, open these up. And you're going to notice there's not a ton of paint in there and that is okay that is very normal since we are using such a small canvas we don't need a lot of paint so go ahead open these up and plop your paint onto this little kind of cardboardy uh <laughs> little shirt board here but you can plop your paint on top and it becomes a palette so pretty nifty so go ahead and scoop all your paints on your palette and also, pretty important, find your two brushes. Okay, so our two brushes we're using today, one is a little bigger. This is going to be referred to as the mama brush. And the little guy, we're gonna call this the baby brush. So mama and baby are what um, we'll be working with today. And to keep the bristles really nice, um, and you can reuse these after this class. I like to leave my brushes in a little water cup for the duration of class. So now is a good time to find a little water cup. If you haven't, that's one thing we couldn't include in the kit is a cup of water. So on you to go create your own little water cup there. You also may find some instructions. If you ever get lost or need to leave the video, you can always refer to the written instructions for the painting as well. Okay, so you have your space all prepped. Let's kind of prep our expectations. So how this class will work is I'll be taking you step by step through our particular painting, giving you tips and tricks along the way so that by the time we are kind of done with class, you will have your very own masterpiece. So I like to stress that uh, it's your own masterpiece. So it's going to look a little different than mine, a little different than the example, and that is okay. That's kind of where the fun comes in, is you get to shine. Whether you know it or not, you have your own artistic style, so roll with it. And if at any point you just want to go rogue, you can do that too. All right, are you ready to paint? I'm going to guess you said yes. All right, so here is my canvas. First step, really easy. We are going to fill the top half with a mixture of a little blue and a little white. So white and blue together. I'll just do kind of a halfway point here. I'm using the Mama brush, blue and white together. And I'm just going side to side, filling this in. Oh, another pro tip here, use water. Wet your brush every now and again and it will stay nice and hydrated and it'll really help that paint spread smooth. Sometimes, see like that, I'm going side to side, but the canvas is still popping through. That is a sign that I need more paint, more water on my brush. So a nice sky blue, really beautiful day we're painting here. And one other little tip. So I want you, as you're going along the front of your canvas, to continue whatever color you have onto the sides of your canvas as well. So basically we're framing our canvas with color. And this means you don't need to get a frame. If you do decide to hang this, oh, maybe right above your bed, it would look really nice. You do not need a frame. 
if you already have it gallery wrapped is the term to have the color all on the sides of your canvas as well. So just going big horizontal strokes until I have a nice blue top half. Lamb bam. You know what? This is also our background, so don't get too attached to it. We're going to cover it up uh, quite a bit. So just get a nice kind of coat of blue on there. And then I want you to rinse out your brush. So brush, I'm just giving it a nice little bath over here, cleaning out all the blue. And then I want you to find your green. Okay, so I want you to fill up your brush with some of that nice green. And then just fill in the bottom portion. And you may say, wait, isn't, aren't we doing Zion National Park? I say, yes, trust me, it's coming. We just kind of have to fill in these base colors and then we can have fun with the canyon country. So I have some green, but I also have this nice deep yellow. So what happens when I mix the two? Well, you get kind of a nice blend of these warm olive green tones. So I think it looks really nice to mix in a little yellow in here as well. You can also kind of mix up your brush strokes. See how, unlike the sky, which are really big, smooth strokes, these are more dappled, kind of more natural looking, almost like plant life, which is what we're going for. So just some nice textured strokes covering all the way to the bottom. And you know what? Don't forget your side edges with the green as well. I'll probably get some paint on my fingers and that's okay. I'm guessing you're probably um, painting on a flat surface, but you can even use your little, um, little cardboard box that your creativity kit came in as a easel, which is kind of cool. I just prefer to hold it so you can see it even better. All right, so right now our landscape looks like somewhere in the middle of Kansas, pretty flat, you know, not too much going on. So before we move on and make this really look like Zion, you just have to let it dry a little bit. So you can sit and watch paint dry, which is kind of boring. You can turn on some music and just kind of dance around with your canvas. Shaking it like this really helps speed up the drying process. And that's what I'm gonna do. So give it a little shake. And in the meantime, you can kind of just think about warm sunny days in the desert. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion National Park, but it is truly magical any season of the year. So actually I probably not summer, it might get a little too hot. But even in winter, it's really special. I hope you can someday go there. On and on and on, just shaking, shaking, shaking. And really you're gonna shake until your sky is dry. So how can you tell if your sky is dry? Well, you can look at it. If it's still shiny, then it's still wet. You can also do the tap test where you just lightly tap with your finger. And if you get any color like I just got, still wet. That's a question I get a lot in in-person classes, is how do I know when it's dry? Well, those two ways. Almost there. You can also turn this into a, <laughs> into a cardio portion of class. You can like really dance with it and do some squats. You can jump around. Although just be careful, like I just whacked my computer here. Careful where you're shaking wet paint because sometimes it can get places you don't want it to get. All right, I think we're almost there. I am going to kind of move on. If you are still really wet, you can press pause and keep shaking until your sky is dry. But I'm just gonna kind of show you where we're going. So keep shaking if you like. But we are going to start to build our canyon walls. So depending on how comfortable you are with your brushes, you can either use the mama brush or the little detail brush. 
Now, if you have more OCD tendencies, you like control, you uh, you may want to use the baby brush. If you're like me and are kind of lazy and uh, don't like to have to reapply paint to your brush a lot, you can use the mama brush like me. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this, it's kind of like a brownish tan. I believe it's Venetian red if you really want to get fancy with it and some white. So that little brownish color and white. And I'm going to come over on the left side of my canvas here and I'm just gonna start to kind of sketch my first canyon. So think of these like jagged mountaintops. They're pretty steep and it gets kind of shorter as it gets towards the middle, okay? So from here, I'm just going to start to fill it in. And as I fill it in, it's pretty milky, right? Look, it's honestly the color of my skin right now. So as you fill it in, grab a little more of that burnt sienna and kind of pull it down and see how that changes the color. And notice how these vertical brush strokes are already making it look kind of like a cliff. So the direction of your brush stroke really matters for this step. So think about having some nice verticals. And then as it gets to the grass, to this plant action down here, our strokes are gonna angle down. Nice, so straight, steep cliff bands that then melt into the ground. And keep kind of playing with adding white if your color is getting a little too transparent or you just want it to have a little more pop. Good stuff. Beautiful. Now what does the, the little baby brush look like for this step? Well, it's a lot more um, finer detail. So this could be if you wanna add some like really sharp little lines. But also another little trick here is to kind of remove some of the paint from your brush, especially as it dissipates down into these plants. So with a kind of clean brush, I am kind of spreading out that paint into the plants and see how that blends so nicely. That's what we're going for. Kind of a nice transition from our cliff down into our ground. All right. Let that dry a little bit. And let's make a second side. So this other side is going to be in shadow. So unlike this one, which is pretty light and bright, this is going to be a little deeper and darker. Okay, so... I'm going to mix up a kind of funky blend here. This is going to be our like brownish color and some blue. Some brown and blue. You know what I realized? I forgot to put red on my palette. Heavens. I thought there was a color missing. <laughs> All right. So notice how the blue and the brown makes this kind of funky, it's like chocolate that's gone bad <laughs> color. But whenever I take it to the canvas, this really reads as a dark kind of shadowy tone. So take a little bit of that brown and blue mixture with whatever brush you like. We got two, can't get too, too complicated. And then just create a similar shape. So nice, steep kind of vertical strokes that then dissipate and overlap our first canyon wall. This shadow wall is going to be in front if you can't tell. So how does it, how do we know it's in front? Well, the line goes over top. You can even add a little red into the mix. Let's see what happens here when I add a little red. Ooh, it's almost like purple. Very cool. 
Awesome. And just keep kind of filling it in a little bit at a time, keeping the edges nice and jagged. You can even create these little almost like hoodoo shapes. Red Rock um, country in Southern Utah and Arizona and the American West is really funky. The shapes are bizarre. So you can get away with a lot of funny business. So now I'm just taking some pure burnt sienna, that brown, I'm just kind of plopping it in here and there. See how that pops against the dark background? And same deal, letting it dissipate down into the green. All right. So I'm doing that same trick where I rinse out the brush. I have a clean brush here. And then I'll just kind of smear and smush that wet paint down into our grassy colors. So that does a nice blending. And just tinker with it. Make, I'm making like little almost like rock, rock like brush strokes. I imagine there's some kind of bouldery bits down here in our plants before it becomes that vertical sheer cliff. Very cool, very cool. All right, so we have this nice shadow color going. Now I want you to grab your baby brush. So uh, taking some of that shadowy brown and blue mixture on the baby brush, we're gonna come back to our first cliff here our first mesa and just going to kind of add some definition. So I'm just kind of picking some parts that I want to really stand out. So maybe kind of outlining some parts of the top here and then pulling those lines straight down. You see how that makes it look so much more three dimensional, especially when I hold it back. This is also a good time for you to hold your painting back a little bit. And just keep it going again. These brush strokes are also going to dissipate down, melting down into kind of the ground there. And you can also, you know, if you if you're going along and maybe you're like, ooh, I got a little too dark, you can always go back into your white and burnt sienna mix and lighten anything up that you need. So I just added a nice little highlight there. I think I got a little too dark in some sections. Mm, da, da, da. And please take your time. I do these paintings a lot, so I feel like I do them maybe at a speed that isn't natural. <laughs> but um, it's it's just you know kind of my job. I just end up doing it really fast. But seriously, take your time. Pause if you need. All right. So coming back to our shadowy peak now. Now I want you to take a little white and burnt sienna together. So see how we're kind of going in oppositions? I added shadow to the light cliff and now I'm adding a little bit of light to my shadowy cliff. So just same deal, just kind of picking some spots that I want to highlight, little outlines here and there. You can really add a lot of funky rock shapes in here love it this is so cool and also my paint is still a little wet so it's blending together really nicely wet paint is going to blend with wet paint once it dries you kind of you're not going to get very smooth blends but that's that's okay it'll just be kind of a graphic look all right pretty cool now is also a good time to step back from your painting. I notice when I kind of zoom back or lean back that I want this really far away portion to stand out a little more. Very neat. All right, Zion's coming along. So we need a nice river. In Zion, it's actually called the Virgin River, which sculpted the canyon. And um, my river is going to with a little bit of perspective. So I'm mixing up some white and blue, similar mix to my sky. Now perspective, um, kind of like when you see something that's further away, it looks shorter or smaller. Like a, when you're standing in the middle of a road and you look off in the distance, the road gets 
really thin. So just like in real life, our river is going to start off really thin and small. So right here, kind of where our canyons meet, I have my baby brush, blue and white paint. And then I'm just going to kind of follow and snake my way. Still pretty thin, but check this out. As it loops around, see how wide my river gets here? I might even take it even wider. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So another fun trick for water is to not fully mix your blue and white paint. So I kind of have like a sloppy mix here. But as I kind of follow the flow of the river with this paint that isn't fully mixed, you see how it creates almost like um, a lot of movement. Painting water is really fun. You can add some nice highlights and um, kind of movement up here in the thinner parts of your river as well. It's a little more white to create a highlight. Awesome. And sometimes um, perspective's a little hard. So sometimes I'll measure with my fingers. So like way off here in the distance, it, I can my fingers are almost touching. That's how thin it is. Where, check this out, the very bottom is almost the entire bottom of the canvas. Okay? So don't be afraid to go really wide at the bottom. It makes visual sense, even though it seems a little crazy. All right, looking pretty good. So far, I do think our sky needs some love, needs some cloud action. So rinse out your mama brush really well and grab some white paint. So just some white. And a really, um, really easy and successful cloud shape that I find is gonna be fluffy on the top, flat on the bottom. So I'm just coming up in the sky, fluffy on the top flat on the bottom. Pretty cute, huh? Feel free to use the baby brush if that is more comfortable for you. Fluffy on the top, flat on the bottom. Do your best to make each cloud a little different. You can even do just some kind of horizontal guys, like some nice cirrus clouds wisping up in the top here. And just be careful when you get close to your your cliffs so you don't overlap them. It's kind of like playing the game operation. All right. Poof poofs, happy little clouds. Awesome. Now this is a really good time to zoom out and kind of see what your painting is lacking and what it's doing really, really good at. So something I have noticed with clouds, though, is they're not just perfectly white. There are 3D objects just like our cliffs and the water, so they're going to have some, some highlights and shadows. So I want you to find your little baby brush and mix up a light gray. Gray is black and white. It's going to be mostly white, a little bit of black. Baby brush, black and white to make gray. And we're just going to come on the bottom of our clouds and just kind of lightly put in a little bit of a shadow. You see how that just adds a little more depth to our clouds? Pretty fun. I love painting clouds because they are so freestyle. They're different every day. They're real funky, so you can just make them any shape and it'll, it'll work. It's not like there's ever been a, a bad cloud. All right, looking pretty good. Now is your chance to tinker. This is the stage of the painting where I typically ruin everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe I should add a bird. Don't add a bird. What you can do is maybe go back into your cliffs and add any little other details that you think would make it just stand out and be extra beautiful like that. 
And the last step for this in every painting is signing your work. So in any color that makes you happy, you can just take your little detail brush and in the bottom right hand corner, gallery standard, you just add your initials and voila, you have your very own mini masterpiece. So take your time um, and you can always rewind if you, if you miss something. Um, but I just thank you so much for joining us today with your little creativity at home kit. And I hope that you were able to have some fun. Maybe you learned something, but most of all, I hope you were present and were able to just tap in to that creativity that maybe you don't get to access every day. So thank you so much for being an artist tonight or today, whatever time it is. And again, I'm Anna. This is the paint mixer, and I hope you're able to join us for a class sometime soon. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.